Blessings kingdom. Amen. We bless God for being in the house one more time. All of you that are viewing with us far and near, thank God for you being in the house with us on today. God bless you, kingdom. God bless you, kingdom. Come on. As we're about to go into our Bible study, I'm not going to be before you long, but God has definitely given me something that I believe that would help us in the continu continuity of life. And most of us know that uh, when it comes to the continuity of life, there has to be some changes. You got to make some adjustments. You got to do some things, amen, for us to live a long life and an everlasting life. So as we are about to go into our Bible study, a few things. I want to bless all of you for coming in as we always share, as always, as, as we always say, rather, amen, share, like, and comment, share, like, and comment. So I ask all of you to do so in your comments. Amen. I just wanted to be live on our view. Amen. A lot of times we're just kind of stagnant. I know you're watching and you're getting notes. Amen. But we just want you to be live. We want you to have some comments. Amen. Based on what the Lord is saying to the house. Amen. What the spirit is saying to the church. Then also, amen, I want you to share. Amen. This is a part of evangelism. There's something I'm going to be talking about real soon. And one of you, all of you, to uh, play a part in social media. Listen, you have to understand that social media is a media tool that we can use for evangelism. And I believe that the LRC, I'm talking to all of you as you're watching this, as you're watching this live. Amen. We have to evangelize. We have to use what the, the resources that is given to us to be able to, to draw people in. That means that I don't know the, the context that, are, that you have. I don't know family members that you know. I don't know coworkers that you work with every day. You do. And so as we share, like, and comment, as we share, I want you sharing our post on our Facebook on our Facebook page. I want you to become a fan. I want you to become associated to our page. Amen. We send out posts every week, not just announcements, but all kind of stuff. Amen. Amen. They were talking about National Dessert Day. I missed that one. And I was like, Lord Jesus, I didn't even know there was a National Dessert Day. But our media team has been doing a fantastic job, and they've been doing things and, and putting things out so we can be uh, interactive on our page. So if you see something, post it. You see something, post it. I want you to go and post that on your page and share and like. Amen? So not only that, amen, we want this Bible study to just to trend. Okay? We want this Bible study to trend because I believe this word that I'm about to give you today is something that all of us can benefit from. Amen. All of us can benefit from. So I want you sharing. Amen. I think last time we had maybe five shares or something to that effect, but we have 50 some members. Amen. Everybody should be looking on on this on this view and this page. Amen. And and sharing and liking and be able to evangelize. This is an easy tool tool to do. All you have to do is copy the link or share. When you say share on Facebook or you're sharing on face on uh, YouTube, our YouTube page, subscribe to that. If you're doing that, all you have to do is share and then send it to somebody and even send a link. That's all you got to do. It's real easy. And say, hey, watch this. I think this will help you. So that's what I want you to do, kingdom. Everybody, when you are seeing the Bible study, amen, I want you to share. I want you to sp uh, spread this gospel, amen, because the Bible says that how can the gospel be here unless it is here to those that are lost. That means that somebody's not hearing this word, and they're not hearing the word because you're not sharing the word, all right? So let's share the word. Everybody say share, share, share. Share the word. Share this Bible study, amen. I'm going to go to a simple passage of Scripture that I believe that will help us in our teaching on tonight. And I pray that you have your Bible. I pray that you have the word as we're about to go into the depths and the understanding of the word. All right. Let's go to Proverbs, the, the, the Proverbs, the 11th chapter, verse 1. Proverbs 11, 1. Real simple, easy scripture. But there, this, but this, this verse is, has so much impact and it has so much value when it comes to the continuity of life. All right. Let's go to the word. And it says, a false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. I'm going to read that scripture again. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. 
for the word. We bless you, God, for what you're about to do in this Bible study. I pray, God, that you give me revelatory thoughts and minds. God, that you allow my mind to sync with your mind and allow my spirit to sync with your spirit. And as we're about to go into the depths of this word, God, use my continence, use my thoughts, God, use what you give me in this moment of prayer, in this moment of this Bible study, and even through this prayer, God, that I will connect with you in the course of the day. God, we know, God, that everything that we have done today God, we know, God, that has been orchestrated by your hand. So we thank you for the provision of the day. We thank you for the elevation of the day. We thank you for the revelation of this word. And I pray, God, that this word will be the the the, the benefit, be the, the continuity of what we need to do, be able, God, to go into a changing of life. And I ask now in the name of Jesus, God, that you would allow me to go into this word, God, with comprehension. God, go into this word with clarity. Go into this Bible study with understanding. And so I ask now, oh God, that you calm my spirit. I pray now, oh God, that you will allow my spirit to connect with you, that I will be the messenger of this word on tonight and be able to teach this word with clarity. And so, God, we bless you. We honor you. We love you. And we adore you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Come on, everybody shout and say amen. We bless God. We bless God. All right. Kingdom. Amen. One of the things that I want to talk to you about, I'm going to get on the edge of my seat because I really think that this is something that many of you probably suffer with. Amen. And uh, when we're talking about this reset series, amen, I thank God that some of you have been blessed with it. Amen. It's definitely blessed me as well. And one of the things that I want to talk about, balance reset. I want to talk about a balance reset. I want to talk about that. I'm going to teach on that tonight. And uh, we're going to go into just take segments of the scripture, break it down as best we can, and then go into some points that I really believe that will help us in the continuity of life. Um, as we go into this, I think that a lot of times when we're talking about a balance, a balanced life, uh, we talk about the balance of, of health, uh, the balance of mental state, our thinking. We talk about the balance of relationships. We talk about the balance of working. We talk about the balance of, we talk about or even think about the balance of relationships. I think I said that before. We talk about or think about the balance of, of, a, of a marriage, a relationship, how husband, wife, children, how do we balance these things? Amen. I, we, we talk about the balance of relationships uh, in our before I do uh, before you say I do classes because we have to understand even in the balance of a marriage there is a trifold understanding of the individuals that are in the marriage. Prime example, um, the person, the male, the male that is in the marriage, he is a man, he's a husband, and then if he has kids, he's a father, and so he has to balance his weight. He has to balance who he is at the time based on the challenge that is presented to him. I hope you hear me good. The reason why I say that, because there's times that he has to balance his integrity as a man. Then he has to balance his relationship as a father and as a husband. And those aspects are sometimes can commingle themselves, and sometimes they can be off balance. And so the same thing with the wife, the woman. Though she is a woman first, then she's a mother, then she's a wife, or a wife, and then she's a mother, in that order. The reason why I say that order is because God created her as a woman. When she got married, she became a wife first, and then there she became a mother. So a lot of times I think what happens in the relationship, even with marriages, um, a lot of times we don't know how to stop being fathers and being mothers. And we don't know how to be husbands and wives. And then there's an imbalance of how to be men and women. And sometimes what we have to do is we have to be able to identify how to balance in those relationships, okay? We have to balance ourselves as men. We have to balance ourselves or yourself as a woman. And I think a lot of times that we co-mingle those things, we just throw it into the pot, amen? And it becomes, we stir it up and it just become, it comes out just as it comes out. But God does not allow, does not want us to just throw everything into a pot. He does not want us to have um, the imbalance of life, to understand the roles and responsibilities that we have as men and women and then fathers and husband, uh, husbands and fathers, mothers and wives and different things to that effect. So what we have to do, what we have to do is we have to understand and come to the scripture that having a living and imbalanced life it is an abomination to God. Amen. That means it disgusts him. That means that he is not pleased with it. Amen. When we talk about the abomination. So when we talk about the falseness of balance, that means that it is not a... Um, 
It is, when we talk about the falseness, it means in the aspect of, of the Hebrew, it means that is a disgrace. So when he says, uh, let's break the scripture down, a false balance, a disgrace balance is an abomination, disgusting to, to the Lord. So we have to identify within ourselves that we have to come to the conclusion, how am I, is my life balanced? You got to ask yourself that question. Is my life balanced? OK, so when we talk about the, the, the balance to identify even balance, what does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? Do I have peace? Do I have joy? Do I have contentment in my day, in my course of my week, in my life, some aspect of what I do? Do I have something that ba that balances me out? Am I always stressed? Do I always have anxiety? Am I always overworked? Am I over, 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 always overpressed? Am I always doing something? Am I doing something to the point that my body does not allow me to have the proper rest? You have to ask yourself that question. Am I a busybody? Even the Bible talks about being busybodies. Amen. Am I a busybody to the point that I don't have a moment that I can take a me moment? And I believe that a lot of us, we have to take the moment that we have to have a me moment. Amen. Amen. Tweet that. Amen. We got to have a me moment. Put that on Facebook. Put that on your page. Everybody say, I have to have a me moment. The me moment comes to the point, and I'm going to the scripture. The me moment has to come to the point of Matthew, uh, Matthew 14, 22, and 23. And even Jesus, I'm going to give you a prime example. Even Jesus stilled away. Even Jesus had a me moment. Because we talk about ministry all the time, we, and, and a lot of times we always think that Jesus was on 24-7. Um, Jesus ministered all the time. Every time that he came into the town, he was always ministering. He was always ministering. He was always ministering. And there were, there were several times in the Gospels that even in, in, even in Matthew that Jesus stealed away. He stealed away. I'm going to prove it to you in the, in, the, in the passage of the Scripture. So if Jesus stealed away, how come we can't? That means that we have to have the balance. That means we work, we play, we do the things we need to do. But there must be a moment that we have to steal away. Okay, I'm going to go to the scripture, and then I'm going to give you some points. Okay, Matthew, the 22nd chapter, and it says, And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get them into the ship and to go before him and to the other side. Check this out. While he sent the multitude away. Why he sent the multitude away. Then, let's go to the next verse. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. Check this out. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. I pray that ministered to you right there. The reason why I bring, I, I'm bringing this passage of scripture into this teaching, which is not a part of hermeneutics. I know that when we get into the hermeneutics, we always stay in the context of the scripture and we don't cross reference. But I had to bring this into a reference uh, to let you know that Jesus stilled away. That means Jesus pushed back. He told the disciples, OK, listen, you go before me, go to the other side. Amen. And therefore, when you go to the other side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the crowd, go away. He was not being mean. He was not he was he was not being cruel. He was saying, listen, I got to I got to steal away for a moment. I went up to the mountain. That means he went to a high place. Y'all better catch this. He went to a high place. He went to a place that nobody else went. And therefore, what did he do? He went to the place alone. So here's the here's the revelation that I want to get to bring to you out of this scripture. Amen. One, he stilled away. He pushed the crowd away. He told the crowd to go away. That's number two. Number three, he went to a high place. He went to a place that nobody else could go. Number four, he went to the place alone. Okay, so I want to minister to somebody that when we're talking about the balance and the continu and continuity of life, there has to be a moment that you have to have a me moment. Jesus had a me moment. Why? It's because, it's because he knew that he had other assignments that were before him. He knew that he had to have the energy to do the assignment that was before him. And many of us are working not on 100 percent. We're not working on 100 percent energy because we have exhausted everything into the aspects of the assignment. That means whatever your assignment is, that means when I say your assignment, your assignment as a man, husband, 
uh, as a father, your assignment as a wife, a woman, and a mother, your assignment as a son, your assignment of who you are, what you do every day. There has to be a moment that you have to re-energize yourself. There has to be a moment that you have to take a me moment to get re-energized. It's because it goes back to the Energizer Bunny. Amen. I know that's a, that's a funny, funny commercial, but at some point, batteries do die. Uh, you better catch that. But at some point, battery, batteries do lose energy. And uh, that we have some re, re, uh, rechargeable. We have some rechargeable batteries that we that we use at the house uh, on this particular on this lighting set that I have outside. And what what it does is this is revelation, y'all. What the, what it does it gets energy from the sun. Now it does not illuminate during the, during the day, but at the top of the light, the light. The batteries inside of the lighting house and on top of the housing, there is a little panel of solar energy that re regenerates or gives energy to the batteries that are inside. And it's only the way, the only way, check this out, the only way the energy can or the only way that the batteries can be regenerized or, or energy or get that energy or recharge, check this out, is that it has to have the sun. It has to have access to the energy. So if there is a cloudy day, if there's a day that, um, you know, it's raining and there's no sun, check this out. If there is sun before the day, guess what? The energy that was retained from the day before has now been re in reserve for the batteries to illuminate the light. So what I'm trying to tell you is, is that many of us, what we do is we just we exhaust all of our energy. We exhaust all of our energy during the day, doing this, doing that, doing all the multiple things that we do, and we don't take the time to get recharged. I, be, I pray y'all get this tonight. We don't take the time to get recharged. So Jesus, what did he do? He pushed, he told the disciples, go before me. They went to the other side. Number two, he told the crowd, still away. He told the crowd to go away. Number three, he went to a high place. He went to a place that nobody else went to, okay? Number four, and he went alone. The reason why I really believe that it's important for us to understand this is because we try to take too many people into our alone place. We try to take too many people in our me moment. And there's got to be a moment that you have to have the balance of life. You have to have a mental balance. You have to have a spiritual balance. You have to have a physical balance. You can't press and do everything all day, every day, all to die, and never have the moment that you got to have some, re some, some energy or to get recharged. I pray, I'm pray, I pray this help is helping someone tonight. So um, I bring this scripture to because uh, even down to doing some research, it says that the continuity of life and the balance of life is important because during the, during the work day, we have moments, either however you may be working, you may be working a part-time job, you may be working an eight-hour job, you may be working a 10-hour job, amen. In the, in the day of a 24-hour day, majority of our time is either producing, we're working, or we're on assignment. Amen. And if you really think about it, and then we talk about when we think about the day, the course of the day, majority of the day is gone because we have either six, eight or eight hours of sleep. Most of you five or four. So we have to understand that you cannot you cannot have the balance of life and you cannot have a just weight. Hey, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm getting ahead of myself. You cannot have a just way. You cannot have a balance of life if there is no balance when it comes to the physical status of your of yourself or of your mental thinking. So you got to balance this out. Everybody say balance, 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 balance. OK, so the first point that I want to bring to you is identify the offset, identify the offset, identify the offset. Okay, I'm going to give you the definition of what offset means, and then I'm, I'm going to kind of illuminate through the spirit of God as he speaks to me concerning this point. All right. The definition of offset, it means the amount or distance by which something is out of line. Wow. Something that something is out of line. Something is out of line. So the reason why I say identify the offset is because you have to identify what is out of line. You have to identify in the course of your life, you have to identify what is off, 
What is off? What is causing me to be off in my, in my mental thinking, in my decisions, how I handle people, what I say, my responses? And many of you must understand that the reason why you're so angry, the reason why you have a haughty spirit, or the reason why you talk nasty to me is because maybe you're offline. Maybe you're out of order. Maybe you're offset. And you don't have enough, enough energy to have the patience of God. It's because your body can only handle so much stress. Your body can handle on, only, only handle so much anxiety. Your body can only handle so much weight. That's my next point. Amen. Before I get there. So you have to understand there has to be a point that you have to identify what is off. What is out of line what is out of line? What causes me to be out of line? Is it people? Is it places? Is it things? Is it challenges? Is it people? Is it, is it relationships? Is it my children? Is it my husband? Is it me? You have to ask yourself the question, what is offline? you got to identify what is off. I pray this is ministering to somebody because if you really think about how we think about the course of our day, Amen. And somebody is saying right now, ain't nothing wrong with me. Yes, there is. Because if you really think about, if you really think about who you are, we're always doing something, check this out, for someone else, but very seldom that we do self-care. And we have to have self-care. We have to take care of ourselves. Amen. The reason why, amen, I, I kind of took off Bible study is because I realized that my body was, oh, I was overdoing it. And I had to take a moment to say, okay, enough. Let me rest. Let me get my mental state together. Let me get my spiritual stuff together. Amen. And sometimes we have to say no. And I think a lot of times that's the problem when it comes to being, uh, uh, having that continuity of life. There has to be a moment that you say, listen, I can't handle that. Or no, I can't do that because it, I, I'm, I'm overdoing. And a lot of times we get committed to a situation. We get committed to people and relationships. So we have to say yes. We have to be there. We have to uh, expose ourselves and, and, and expose our energy to somebody else's assignment. Y'all better, better hear me today. We have, to, we have exposed ourselves to somebody else's uh, challenges and issues, not resolving our own and so now we're exhausted we're frustrated and now that frustration comes out in our mannerisms it comes out in our character it comes out in our talking our responses and God is saying there has to be a balance and when you're in a false balance isn't a disgusting thing to God y'all better catch that and I don't want to be disgusting to God amen I want to live a balanced life Amen. I want to live a balanced life where I can have some fun and go off and do some things. I want to be able to do some things that I need to do. And I'm, I'm guilty of it. Amen. I raise my hand. I'm guilty of it because I work my, the way my work is. Amen. And I've been praying about it. Amen. I work 100 hours. Amen. Every two weeks, every 15 days. And that's a long, that's a, that's a whole lot of hours. Amen. In Jesus' name. So we all have to have a moment that we have to have balance we have to balance the way that we think the way we the the way we, the way we respond how we are in relationships we got to have moments that we date and go out and have movie time and doing do all that kind of stuff and everything else amen we all yes i'm saying it is because we got to do it we have to all have to do it in jesus name so you have to identify what's off you have to identify uh which is something out of line what is out of line in your life is it your thinking? Is it that the fact that um, you're always there for everybody else, but you're never there for yourself? You have to ask this question, what is off? What is out of line? Identify that. Then make the necessary adjustments. Okay? That's the point number two. Make the necessary adjustments. Make the adjustments because God is telling us that, it, that if, your, if your false balance is, it, is at a point that you don't have joy, peace, content, check this out, the fruit of the Spirit. OK, if you don't have. Thank you. Thank you. Kind of spirit. Thank you. Kind of spirit. If you don't have Galatians 522, amen, the fruit of the spirit, which is joy, peace, meekness, temperance, long suffering against such. There is no law. That means that that means that you're not connecting with the spirit of the uh, spirit of the living God. Therefore, when we connect with the spirit of the living God, the spirit of the living God will give us the peace. It will give us the joy. It will give us the con contentment. It will give us the long suffering. It will give us the meekness that we need when we're facing challenges and situations that are overwhelming. So we got to make the adjustments. Everyone say make the adjustments. That's point number two. You got to make the adjustments. You got to make the adjustments. Evaluate, identify what's off, and then make the adjustments. 
you got to know, you got to know within yourself that when you make the necessary adjustments when it comes to the continuity of your life, amen, there may be some eliminations in some things. Uh-oh, that's, that's, that's rough. That's real rough right there. And I'm going to tell you why that's rough. It's because a lot of times in our life, we like to add things to us, but we don't like to dismiss things. We don't like to remove things from our lives. It's why, because we think we're missing out or we think that we're uh, maybe uh, hurting someone's feelings or different things to that effect. But you have to understand that, that the person that you may say no to must understand that you're trying to have a balanced life. It's not to say that we can't help every every you know help people every now and then. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is is that when you get to a point that you are exhausting yourself for everyone else and you're exhausting yourself for your job and this and that and everything, you don't have a me time for yourself. Therefore, you are now living a false balance. You're living a false balance. And God does not want us to live a false balance. So you need to make the adjustments. Make the adjustments with your wife, your husband. Make the adjustments as a man. Monitor yourself and say, you know what? Here, let me. Okay, let me put it like this. How you monitor yourself? Okay, prime example. Do this for the week. Go through the course of the week and say, okay, if I'm planning, if I plan to do something on this day, do I do it at the time specific that I say I'm going to do it, and then I designate. So many, so, so much time to that assignment. Then I look at, do I, am I committed to it? And then do I do it? Then from there, after you look at the assignment, after you look at the time management, because that's really what it is. After you look at your time management, you go back and evaluate to say, okay, was I off? Was I, on, was I in line of what I did? If I'm doing something on a Monday and I have plans on that day, that means you pre-plan that day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You pre-plan those days. That's, this is a challenge. You pre-plan those days, and then you orchestrate those days and say, okay, I have this plan, I have that plan, I have that plan on that Monday, I have that plan on Tuesday, I have that plan on Wednesday, I have that plan on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Now, then you go back to it, and you plan, you, you monitor it, you say, okay, did I do exactly what I said I was going to do, or did I allow, check this, out, check this out, or did I allow someone to get me off of my plan? Did I, get to, did I allow somebody to get me off my plan? Because now when you allow somebody to get you off, the, off your plan and the thing that you have put in place, now you have now become into a point of being false balance. So you have to, to pre-plan and then you have to monitor, did I stick to the plan? Did I stick to my time management? Did I not only stick to my time management, but in the course of the day, how much time do I have to myself? You got to ask that question. You got to ask yourself, how much time do I have out of a 24-hour day outside of being asleep do I have to myself? So you ask that question, you ask yourself that question, and you evaluate, okay? So here's my last point, and I told you I wasn't going to be long, y'all, because um, I, I really wanted to kind of just illuminate this scripture, give you some points, and let's get some balance, all right? The, the last thing is you have to know your weight capacity. That's my last point. You have to know your weight capacity. You have to, you, you have to know your weight capacity, okay? So engineers, as they, in, in construction, when it comes to road construction, um, many of you may be driving 465, and maybe you, some, some of you may not even notice it. Um, but as I was noticing my driving, um, there was a couple of bridges that I go over and different things to that effect. And they tell, they have a sign that's literally on the side of the road as you're going over the bridge. It says, weight capacity two tons. If, if you're over that capacity, then it is not recommended, you know, so many words, it's not recommended, amen, to go over this bridge. But it has a weight capacity. Why? It's because the engineers had already, based on the engineers and the construction workers, based on the architects of how they designed the bridge, they have put a sign up to let this person know, if you are beyond the two-ton weight limit, it is not recommended for you to cross this bridge. 
Y'all better, better catch that, okay? So the thing of it is, what I'm trying to say to you is that what happens to us is, one, we ignore the sign. Whew, thank you, Jesus. We ignore the sign and allow the weight that is not uh, to the weight capacity for us to cross over, we allow it to come. So what happens, check this out. So what happens if this, if this vehicle or semi-truck is over, check this out, is over the two-ton weight. What happens to the bridge secretly, the inner parts of the bridge, such as the steel and the concrete, begins to crack within itself. You don't notice the cracks outside, but there's a crumbling that it happens inside. Yeah, but catch that, my God. So in, in the aspect of this, as, as much as, as, the, as the overcapacity of the weight crosses the bridge, over time, the bridge will crumble. It will crack. It will fail to the point that now engineers have to come back to the bridge that they built and reestablish the bridge. They have to repair the bridge. Or they have to tear it down and rebuild a better bridge. Okay, here's the revelation. What I'm trying to say to many of you at this moment, you have to know your weight capacity. You have to know that, listen, that right there is too much for me to carry. That's too heavy because I was not made. I was not made to carry that kind of weight. Y'all better catch that tonight. Because let's go back to the let's go back to the scripture. It says, but a just weight. Okay, just. In the Hebrew uh, revelation or the Hebrew translation, it means a right weight is a delight to the Lord. So we have to know what is the right weight. But many times what we do is we ignore the signs. Jesus, help me, Lord. We ignore the signs. Your sign may say, I can only hold so much weight, but we ignore the sign. And so what we do, we take on everybody's stress. We take on everybody's problems. We take on all the things. We do this. We do that. We say yes to this thing. We say yes to that project. We say yes to this. That person wants us because they know that we have the capability of doing it. So they pull us in and we don't think, oh, wait a minute, hold up. I'm already having too much weight. So why would I pull in another project? Why would I pull in and say a yes to something? Something that I'm now not, not allowing myself to evaluate to say maybe this is too much weight. That's the reason why we're stressed. That's the reason why our bodies are breaking down because the inner parts of our body are breaking breaking down. You have heart troubles, amen. You having palpitations, amen. You having hypertension. Come on, Jesus, I'm, I'm I'm speaking to somebody, amen. Our knees buckle, amen. Our knees, we got knee problems, ankle problems, heart problems, amen. We got all kind of different problems going on. It's because the inner parts of our bodies are breaking down. Is why? It's because the weight capacity has now become too much, and we're not we're taking on too much weight. And we're ignoring the sign. I pray I'm ministering to somebody tonight. If you're watching this moment, you got to know your weight capacity. That means you got to put a no in there sometime. You got to say, no, I can't handle that. No, I can't do that. No, it is not time for me. to. I've got this. I've already got, to, I've already committed. I've already done this. But what we do is we say yes, because we don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. We don't want to dis, uh, uh, we don't want to dismangle relationships or anything to that effect. We don't want to hurt people's feelings. All that, well, it's all the above. But there's got to be a point that you've got to know your weight capacity. you got to know what the right weight is because you want the Lord to be, you want the Lord, you want the Lord to be delighted in your weight. That means that you have to have a balanced life, balance in your marriage, balance with your kids. Balance, amen, at your job. Come on, I'm speaking to myself. Amen. I'm speaking to you too. You got to have a balance with ministry. You have to balance You have to balance the continuity of what you do in your time management. And I really believe a lot of times in our time management, we, we don't take the time management serious, in, serious enough to really spread out and to plan properly. Don't ignore the sign. If your sign says two tons and that's all you can take, guess what? Take the two tons. Don't go, don't go, don't allow yourself to go beyond your capacity. Because what did I say? What happens with these bridges, 
We, we don't see the cracks, but the cracks are within the, within the foundation of the bridge, but we don't see the crack. And so God is trying to tell me at this moment, as I'm speaking to somebody at this moment, they may not seek your, see your crack, but you will feel it eventually. And God is saying we have, we have to have some relief in our life. We have to have some relief when the balance of life, because that's the reason why we're having diabetes problems, heart problems. That's the reason why we're overworked, we're overdressed, we're overstressed, we're overthink. A moment that we have a woosah just to take a moment, just what Jesus did. He pushed the multitude away, told the disciples, go to the other side. Go to, the, go to a high place. Because that's what the Bible says. The Bible says that he went uh, up into a mountain to pray. He went to a high place. So, and then here's the thing that I want to bring, in, and I'm done. I'm literally done. Give me five minutes and I'm done. And we're, we're going to take this thing out. When you go to the high place, the Bible also said that he went alone. Too many times we don't like to be alone. We don't, we don't like to have a moment that we're by ourselves. Because we want conversation. We want touch, feel. We want the five love language. Amen. There's nothing wrong with that. Trust me. There's nothing wrong with it. I love the five love, love languages. But at the same time, there has to be a moment that you got to re-energize. There's a moment that you got to get your energy back for the next assignment. I really believe that Jesus went to the mountain. He went to the high place, prayed, key, and went by himself so he can get re-energized, so he can get renewed for the next assignment. Can you imagine how Jesus was if he was ministering all the time, he was tired, he'd, be at, he'd probably have an attitude. <laughs> because as much as the people pulled on him, you think about the story where this, uh, this, uh, the, centurion, the, the, the centurion came to him and he was telling him about his daughter. Oh, he had a servant. He had a servant that was sick. And he's telling the servant everything that was going on. And then at the same time he's telling the servant, here comes the woman with the issue of blood. Or the daughter. Yeah, he had the daughter. The 12-year-old daughter that got sick. So he's telling Jesus, I mean, he's the centurion or the, 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 the man is telling Jesus about his daughter. He's having a conversation. And here comes the woman with the 12, the, 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 the 12 years of the issue of blood. Here she comes. She pulls on his coat. The same time he's trying to minister to somebody else, someone else else is pulling on him. Y'all better catch what I'm saying. Can you imagine? Can you imagine in your sanctified spirit if Jesus did not have a moment that he stilled away and everybody was pulling on him? What his response would be. But he know he knew that he had to re-energize. He knew that he had to get away because he had greater assignments coming and people were going to pull on him. I'm ministering to somebody because you always feel like somebody's always pulling on you. You're ministering to this person, and then right before, right before the before that that moment comes as you're trying to minister, here comes another person. Or here comes, or family member that that you know that you help everybody, you do things, you do this, you need everything else. Or that husband, or that father, or or that mother, or that wife. You're doing this thing. And, or prime example, multiple kids. You got you're dealing with one child, and before you can conclude how you can resolve that situation with your one child, you got another child coming right behind it before you can even come to a conclusion. That's where Jesus was. Jesus was dealing with this man trying to get to his daughter 12 years. And before he even can get to the conclusion of that, here comes something else. He was getting pulled on constantly. So what I'm trying to say to you, kingdom, is that there's nothing wrong with help. There's nothing wrong with us helping. But there's got to be a point that we got to help ourselves. There's got to be a point that we got to pull back and say, I have to have a me moment. So I can be, check this out, so I can be productive for the next assignment. Truth be told, many of us are working on half energy. Many of us are working 50%. We're working on 50% energy. And it's only by the grace of God and the spirit of God that we're able to even accomplish half the stuff that we're doing. But the Bible says a false balance is an abomination to God, but a just weight is his delight. 
question is, will you be a false balance or will you live a just weight? That's a good word. Will you live in a false life that will continuously have you frustrated? Will you, will you continue to live in a false balance that will continue to have you walking, working out of line, offset? So the question is, what kind of adjustment do you need to make to have a just weight? You got to ask yourself that question. Think about it. Think about it for a moment. Take the evaluation. Need to do what you need to do and make the needed adjustments. Listen, kingdom, that's my Bible study tonight. I pray that you're blessed by it. I pray that you continue to understand this Proverbs 11 and 1. Mark this on your Bible app. I know many of you have electronic Bibles and all that other good stuff, and that's great. But I want you to, I want you to mark it. All right? All right, kingdom, let's give tonight. Amen. Amen. Let's give tonight. However you can give, I want you to sow a seed on this word. Amen. If you're watching through Facebook, if you're watching through our YouTube channel, amen. We got some exciting things coming up. Amen. My lovely wife will be teaching Bible study for the month of November. Amen. Minister Flukas, amen, our aspiring assistant pastor. Amen. We're preparing him and getting him groomed. Amen. To be my pastor assistant. Amen. He's coming with some things. We're going to be talking about evangelism, and I want you to get ready for that. So listen, I want you to sow a word. Amen. Sow on this on this word so a seed at this moment amen the link is up amen you can give through push pay you can give through our website amen you can give through a give the five however you want to give so a seed tonight however you do that we got we honor your blessing amen in jesus name so listen i want you to catch us catch us right here 11 45 hour amen for what god is about to do amen with kingdom amen we bless god for all of you for watching share like and comment amen do what you need to do to be evangelism I called you. I call you to be an evangelist. Amen. To share this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Catch us at the 1145 hour this coming Sunday. Amen. There will be a word for the house. We bless all of you for watching with us. Amen. God bless your kingdom. Amen. Have a great rest of your week. We'll see you soon. God bless you.